Thank you very much, Petra. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you, Stefan, for participating with us. Uh, the same to Daniel, Manuel, Federico. It's, it's such an honor to have you all sharing those, those concepts with us. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about the applicability of the CISG for license agreements and transfer of know-how. And uh, I'll try as much as possible to walk away from the facts of the case as possible. But uh, if, if I step over any line, please uh, uh, stop me. It might be automatic, but uh, uh, I'll do my best. Uh, if, if the question was, uh, is the CISG applicable to license agreement and transfer of know-how agreement like the pure hearted, the, the traditional license agreement, I would probably say no. Uh, but the wonderful thing about the CISG is, is that it is a living organism. It's, it's, uh, it's something that develops as time goes by. I mean, it goes way beyond the original language of the drafters. And uh, uh, if, if the question was posed today, and, and it actually it, it is posed today, I'd say yes, it is applicable. I'm, I'm always in favor of the applicability of the CISG because it's part of international law, it's part of uh, the movement of unification of international law, it's something that the international trade as a whole uh, would benefit. Uh, not long ago, if, if you bought a, a software for your computer, like a Microsoft uh, a software, you would be receiving a, a book like a full blown book with instructions and and uh, uh, a floppy disk. I mean, most of the kids have absolutely no idea what's a floppy disk, and but it has evolved uh, all the way to a CD ROM, and you also had a key, so you actually had property of this. You could delete, you could reinstall anywhere else. You would have property of uh, something that is being licensed, and you have a perpetual license. I mean, it would be a good. And, and it will be delivered to you. As, as time uh, uh, went by and, and, and things have changed, uh, and I might be wrong because I'm not that high tech, uh, I understand nowadays we simply don't buy a license anymore. We buy a, a user's license and uh, it has to be renewed every single year. Uh, and, I mean, things are, are changing dramatically. Uh, not long ago, I used to travel uh, oh, traveling, I mean, I really miss it. But uh, my kids, I mean, they, they used to love uh, 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 games for PlayStation. And and it was also a CD-ROM. I mean, it was a property. You bought it, you use it, you can go to your friend's house. Uh, things have changed. And, and with, with changes, uh, now you don't have the physical storage uh, uh, thing. Uh, you have uh, uh, a account. In, in uh, somewhere in the clouds and, and, and things are completely different. I mean, you don't have uh, actual uh, delivery of uh, uh, the thing you're, you're using. I'm not even sure you're using it, but uh, uh, things are differently and moving differently as we speak with the evolution of time. And, and when we're talking about high tech uh, license agreements, uh, things do change and they do change a lot. Uh, the first consideration we'd have to have to answer this question is uh, the, the the place of business and domicile of the party. So if the parties are both domiciled in a, a CISG contracting state, there is very little doubt that uh, uh, for those sophisticated agreements, uh, the CISG would apply. Uh, if one of the parties is, 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 is a signatory and the other is not, We'll probably, we'll probably know. We most certainly have to resort to the rules of, of, of uh, private international law. So once you check the rules of uh, conflict of laws of uh, uh, those jurisdictions, if there are, there, there are no provision contrary to the use of foreign law, some jurisdictions, they do have uh, provisions not allowing uh, the application of foreign law, uh, uh, you would have to use uh, the CISG. Uh, it's always important to say that uh, DCIS is not an opt-in, it's an opt-out. So uh, once you've appointed or elected Brazilian law or, or Chinese law 
or any law of a signatory country, uh, you've automatically elected to be subject to the CISG. Uh, when we're talking about uh, 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 know-how or license agreements, uh, we have to go uh, uh, to Article 3 of the CISG. It's, it's, it's mandatory. So if we're talking about a contract for a supply of a certain good to be manufactured, uh, such as, and, and once again, I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, evolution. And, and one of the things I would love to hear, Petra, is uh, uh, we, we're heading towards the moment that you will be able to buy a human heart. You'll be able to buy a human ear something that's uh, either tailor-made or uh, generically made to be replaced. Uh, I mean, is, is it a good? I mean, it's, it's or not. But th this is not the topic over here. I mean, this is just uh, to put a buzz on, on everybody's ear. But the uh, question is, uh, what is a good? I mean, what is a good under, under uh, uh, the CISG? It has to have some physical... Uh, uh, medium. It has to have uh, uh, the possibility of getting hold of it. And when we're talking about high-tech issues, uh, it really doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, microscopic. I mean, if, if, if you have something uh, which is not a cold, I mean, it, I mean, if we're talking about a genetic cold or something like it, it's, it's, it's a completely different story. But if you can place it in a microscope and you can get hold of it, uh, uh, you have something that you received, it's been delivered, uh, ideally being paid for. If not, the case would, would be dramatically different. Uh, so it, 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 it's very clear to me that uh, under those circumstances, the CISG will be applicable. Uh, of course, uh, we might have uh, uh, cases in which Article 3 uh, uh, will take a very important role in which the buyer is also the supplier of parts uh, to be used in the transformation of the good, and and then would have uh, a huge discussion on the preponderance or the substantial part uh, of of the agreement itself, and in, in in which case uh, things would be a lot murkier. Uh, we also we also know we we mostly have to take into consideration. Uh, Article 7 of the CISG, uh, uh, which calls for a, a regard uh, in the international character uh, and the need to promote uniformity in international trade. So it's basically a overall concept that it's, it's hard to gather. Uh, remember, we have uh, on Article 7 uh, uh, the need uh, to absorb good faith in international trade. But if we're talking of mercury or landscape or quicksand, uh, I would try to avoid uh, uh, any discussions on, on good faith. I myself believe there is a need to observe uh, good faith, but I'm most definitely sure that my concept of good faith is probably different uh, from Petra and from Stefan and from everyone in here. So uh, try to avoid it. Uh, also, Article 8, the intent of the parties, as has been said by Manuel and Daniel, is of paramount importance. So the intent of the parties is, is uh, uh, of crucial importance. Uh, of course, if in the drafting of the contract, the parties made it very clear that they want the application of the CISG, uh, or better yet, they, they, they have included in the contract what is the preponderant part of, of, of the contract, uh, be it in quantitative or qualitative uh, 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 criteria, it will make our life a lot easier, but then it would not make a good mood case. Um, so bottom line is uh, uh, the recent changes in, in the length, landscape of international contracts uh, with, with software, as I just started saying, and tailor-made goods uh, uh, have made this dis discussion on, on quantitative and qualita qualitative criteria uh, very important. Uh, I myself am, am favorable uh, to the financial criteria. I, I, I know uh, 
there is a long going discussion and uh, there is a, a discrepancy in the various languages of TCISG, uh, whereas in, in, in English, uh, uh, we have substantial as, as, as the operative word, uh, the French version, and as, as far as I understand, the German uh, version also says essential. So we, we, we have, once again, depending on what kind of dealing we're talking about, to understand the deal itself. Uh, try to imagine a, a paper recycling uh, facility. So you have a huge machine for uh, uh, like a kiln for melting down paper and rubbish uh, uh, into a paper pulp. Uh, once it's finished, you have to replace uh, uh, those uh, uh, material, uh, replace, no, remove those material and move to another machine in which you will uh, take out the rubbish and uh, the useless uh, uh, parts of, of, of the, the pulp and make recycled paper. So you have two different machines, but uh, then comes uh, technological evolution and you have only one machine. So we're talking about two completely different things because uh, the new machine is only a machine with, with a software incorporated. So there is absolutely no way you can just have uh, some, some uh, software tailor-made to make the first machine work with the second machine. Uh, on the other hand, uh, talking about uh, health-related uh, uh, issues, uh, I myself have been doing a lot of uh, MRs, the magnetic resonance exams, and and it's 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 really a pain because you you probably have all done that. You enter into a tunnel machine, and you have to do 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 do, and you spend like an hour, sometimes two hours, in the machine to have an exam. Uh, as far as I understand, some some uh, uh, research facilities they have developed uh, technology using the same machine to reduce waiting time to five to 12 minutes. I would pay anything to have that. Uh, but then you have an improvement in the same machine. You could either buy the machine with those uh, uh, characteristics on, or you could update it. So those are completely different contracts. And those are the things that we have to take into consideration when deciding uh, if, absence intent of the parties in defining what's the applicable law, uh, what is actually the applicable law. Is it the CISG or any other domestic law? Uh, finally, uh, uh, if I were asked if, if, if is there a border between uh, sales and service uh, uh, in, CI and in the CISG, uh, I, I would have to go and understand what's the predominant nature of this international contract. Uh, if the question was, uh, can the same contract uh, for transfer of technology and know-how and transfer of goods uh, have two applicable laws, the same contract with the same, same terms and conditions, uh, I would have to say yes, it's not desirable, uh, but the answer would probably have to be uh, yes. So you could have uh, one contract uh, mm -hmm. with two distinct uh, uh, obligations within it. So we have to take uh, upon the challenge of uh, deciding what's uh, the preponderant uh, element of this contract. Thank you very much, Petra.